What's good everybody, it's your least favorite YouTuber here back at it again to drop what if Naruto was a Hyuga, aka what if Naruto was extra prepared for each and every single arc, <laughs> because that's literally what it is, it's going to be a show that has a lot of ups and a lot of downs. So with that said, all I need to tell you guys for this what if movie is make sure you guys get your snacks because this is about to be a wild ride. With that said, this video is going to be a sponsored one, and in case you guys have been caught up with the previous parts, up on screen right now should be a timestamp to which you guys can skip to if you don't want to watch the first two parts. That being said, I hope you guys go on to enjoy today's video. Hey Ross, sauce it up. At this point, a bunch of people would be waving at him, and Naruto would literally just be looking down at the ground. Naruto is not very happy. And many of you guys might be wondering, what's Naruto doing in the Hyuga compound? Well, I'll explain that a little later on. Naruto is currently on his way for yet another harsh training session with the leader of the Hyuga clan, Hisashi Hyuga. So at this point, Naruto was making his way, and at this point, Naruto was told by his people to go kill it out there to become powerful like his father. Naruto would have like a weird like smile on his face as he would continue walking, and it would twist to that of sadness. As Naruto finally makes it to his to the training compound and then begins his harsh training for more hours on end. Naruto would continue growing and growing and growing, and at this point, like I said, Naruto is nine years old. And the reason that you guys might be wondering, how is Naruto training with the main Hyuga branch family member? Well, it's because Naruto has the Nine Tails within him. He is an asset to the Hyuga clan. This version of Naruto would have spent his previous last nine years of life ever since he was literally four years old training day in and day out. He doesn't want to live like this. Ever since he can remember, Naruto has had to train under these harsh conditions over and over and over and naruto quite frankly has gotten quite sick of this whole living ordeal. naruto just feels as if it was up to him he wouldn't have to train every single day every day to get something new naruto just doesn't feel fulfilled living the life that he does and so naruto just truly doesn't really want to continue training the only real source of happiness that naruto has is his friend hinata he never gets to see her because he's always training and when his training is done he and her never get any time to spend together so naruto is just nine years old and by this point naruto is already a force to be reckoned with having the strength of neji by the time that he fought naruto in the chunin exams and at this point this young naruto has been taught how to control his chakra how to use the byakugan how to attack chakra he has been taught water walking, tree walking, and Naruto is very, very powerful. Many of you guys might be wondering, how did all of this end up happening? Why is Naruto living a life like this? Well, we're going to have to go back in time for me to explain that. So, uh, yeah. At this point, I bet many of you guys are probably thinking, all right, Zether, spill the beans. Why has Naruto been living under these conditions for the past couple of years? Well, I myself don't even know what the reason is that I want to make up quite yet, but uh, I'll go along as I think of random things. So my base explanation for as how Naruto was going to be a Hyuga is Minato is going to be a Hyuga because I still want Kushina to have red hair and still be the mother of Naruto. So that still remains the same meaning that Naruto still has an immense Uzumaki chakra. However, one thing that does change in this version of events is Minato's hair color. Instead of being the yellow flash of the Hidden Leaf Village, he is the black flash of the Hidden Leaf Village. And he's a lot more deadlier in this version of events because he was trained in the art of the Hyuga fighting style. He was a ninja to be feared in the time that he was alive, and when he ended up losing his life, he passed down the abilities of the Ninetales to his young son, who at this point was barely a baby. 
Naruto. The night of the Nine Tails incident ended up happening. Obito took Kushina, Minato saved her, Minato then saved the young baby Naruto, and then, when all hope was lost, he decided that all he could do for the village now was seal the Nine Tails within his young son, Naruto Uzumaki, or Naruto Yuga in this version. What ends up happening here is Minato obviously seals, you know, the Nine Tails within Naruto, and from here, Naruto is pretty much a young baby. In this version, Haruzen still ends up finding a young Naruto, and Naruto is pretty much being fought over with the Hyuga clan and Haruzen wanting to see who is going to take custody of the kid. But Isashi would say that he is a Hyuga clan member, and if anybody's going to be taking care of him, it's going to be the Hyuga clan. So from here, about a couple of weeks more of, you know, basically discussing things and trying to come to an agreement would go by, they would finally end up basically coming to one concession saying that, yeah, Naruto belongs with the Hyugas. So after a little bit, Naruto would then be raised by Hisashi Hyuga. And from here, Naruto would start his long journey of becoming a powerhouse for the Hyuga clan and assets to be used later on if ever needed. With the power of the Nine Tails and the fact that he is the son of the fourth Hokage, Naruto would grow up being told by everybody that they expect so much from him. He has the Nine Tails. He would be told about the Nine Tails in this version of events, and the Hyuga compound would see it as an asset, much less than a liability, or hate him. Anytime that Naruto would go out into the village, people would actually try to not treat him with disrespect because of the fact that they know that if they disrespect the like the little prodigy boy of the Hyugas, they would definitely do something. So while Naruto had protection, he never truly learned what it was like to have love. Naruto was always by himself when he was in training and when he was training, he would hate every second of it. But the only thing that would drive him to continue and try to become powerful is trying to live up to his old man, Lord Fourth, the fourth Hokage, Minato, Yuga, or we could even say Namikaze. So at this point, that's pretty much what I think would be happening in terms of that stuff. From here, Naruto, as I said, is about nine years old, and we're just going to be saying that at this point, Naruto is going to be having his first day of the academy the very next day. When a young Naruto was a kid barely, he noticed the Hinata being bullied by a group of kids, and so the situation where Naruto saves Hinata still ends up happening. Hinata ends up getting love and admiration for Naruto because in her eyes, he's treated so differently by others, and Naruto just saved her. Like He shows signs of having a good heart and compassion, but Naruto is kind of just forced to be a tool, a pawn by his father and everybody else around him. So Hinata does feel a little bit bad for Naruto, but what is she going to do about it? She's nothing but a young girl. Whenever Hinata finishes her training, she loves to watch Naruto train in secret. So we're going to basically have a little bit of a one day time skip. After explaining all of this backstory, how Naruto's life has been so far, yada yada yada, you guys get the picture. Naruto would end up making his way towards the, the Ninja Academy, where he would have his first day as a Genin, or to become a Genin, right? Now, when Naruto does make it to the academy, they would have a test to examine what their abilities are, and Naruto would pass these tests with flying colors, hitting each and every single one of the targets with the kunais, the shuriken, destroying the laps, beating that of Itachi's record as a kid. In case you guys don't know, Itachi was a beast, so to do that, Naruto definitely has to be very, very powerful, a splendid shinobi. So, with that said, what ends up happening here is instead of Sasuke being the one who gains all this insane popularity early on for being an Uchiha, instead, Naruto would actually gain a whole lot of popularity himself. Not only that, but Naruto can actually tap into his own dojutsu, that of the Byakugan, while Sasuke still like has yet to even activate his first Tomoe Sharingan. So that's a little lackluster. And what ends up happening here is Naruto throughout these three years in the Genin Academy would show Sasuke up every single chance he gets. Now when Sasuke was not on his emo stuff, he wouldn't truly care and he and Naruto had a little bit of a rivalry like relationship, but Naruto always obliterated Sasuke and this would force Sasuke to ask his big brother to train him harder, saying that there's somebody stronger in the class than him. Itachi would actually end up getting to know Naruto a little bit, but... I am kind of at a loss because now this is where Sasuke ends up losing his family. 
And when Sasuke does lose his family, this is when things change. He becomes reserved, he becomes more emo-like, and from here, he stops caring about what people think about him. This is when Naruto would simply become the beacon of light in the classroom, and the only time that Naruto truly feels like he can be a human being slightly is in the Ninja Academy. Because everybody seems to look at him as some sort of like god or something, and Naruto can finally have a little bit of friendships, a little bit of time with the people who he considers friends to him, Shikamaru, Choji, and really far away, Lady Hinata. He rarely does ever get to talk to Hinata because of her shy personality. She would still, every time that Naruto would attempt to talk to her, shy away from Naruto saying, Naruto could. I will never do that again, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how he and Nar uh, Hinata's relationship goes. And so we're just going to be time skipping to the final day in the academy. At this point, Naruto has now had three extra years to train with the Hyuga clan. And so I bet many of you guys could probably imagine Naruto is a monster, a complete monster. Most of their stories would have it start off with Naruto not being like, skilled with his chakra. Maybe Naruto still lives by himself. Maybe Naruto does get trained a little bit, but I'm going to be taking the route of making Naruto as broken as I possibly can off rip. By the time that Naruto was 12 years old or 12 or 13, because that's around this time that the story starts, Naruto at this point would have made his own jutsu, the twin lion fist jutsu. Something that took Hinata more years to develop, but Naruto ended up developing it by the time that he graduated from the academy. And so, they would have their test day come around, when they had to create shadow clone jutsus and Naruto passed with flying colors. Due to his mass amount of chakra, Naruto still ended up learning the ability of the multi shadow clone jutsu. However, after all of the tests were done, Naruto would notice that Mizuki ended up throwing his test away. And when class ended, Naruto stayed behind or wanted to go back in the classroom to talk to Mizuki and ask him what that was about. He would hear Mizuki telling a young Genin that the way that he can pass is by stealing the scroll of sealing. Naruto hearing this and knowing that that is just a bunch of BS would end up pretty much following the Genin telling him not to do that, that he's being fooled by Mizuki and that Naruto will handle things. From here, Naruto would go on to find Mizuki, destroy him, ob like, like just obliterating this man, and then learning a couple of jutsus written within the Scroll of Seal. One thing that would catch his attention, however, is a jutsu by the name of Flying Raijin. When Naruto sees this jutsu, he's like, Flying Raijin, I've heard that before. He would think back to when somebody has ever mentioned the name of that jutsu, and he would remember. That was, that was my father's jutsu. From here, Naruto would go on to take a little piece of paper out from his ninja pouch, and he would proceed to write it down. As he would write down all of the implications of the jutsu, the marking, the, uh, the little sign that he has to create, the um, all, all that stuff. Basically, he would write down all the details of the jutsu, and from here, Naruto would end up taking the scroll back to Lord Third. He was it as he would end up making his way inside of his house and think, this is the only thing I have to remember my father. At this point, Naruto would end up making his way back to the Hyuga compound and would continue training with Hiyashi, as he is growing more and more powerful by the day. Hiyashi estimates that in about two years or so, Naruto will probably have surpassed him in skill as a ninja and probably be taking over the Hyuga, the Hyuga family. One thing that Hayashi wants is for Naruto to end up actually marrying Lady Hinata, his daughter. That way that the next person born can become a true monster. Somebody who is the son of the fourth Hokage, who is a prodigy in and of itself, a genius, even greater than the likes of Neji. Oh, and by the way, not mentioning this, Neji and Naruto have actually trained together. So Neji still believes, you know, destiny, yada, yada, yada. But he also believes that Naruto is going to be changing things in the Hyuga compound someday. Someday, Naruto, he believes, is going to be the leader. And he hopes Naruto can change things in the compound. So Neji would still ha harbor a little bit of a hatred for Hinata. But Naruto is always seeming to be there to protect Hinata whenever Neji tries to take things too far. And so... That's pretty much the dynamic that they have going on. 
This is when everybody will report to the academy the very next day, and they would all be told about their Jonin senseis. From here, all of the senseis would walk in except Kakashi. Because we all know Kakashi's always late. And I mean, always late. Yeah. This man Kakashi is late even to meet his own Genin. He would arrive about one hour later. Naruto wouldn't actually be pulling any sort of tricks. He would kind of just be relaxing as Sakura is over there pestering him like usual. Sasuke would be sitting down as, you know, Naruto is just looking at Sakura like, can you for the love of God, leave me alone. As Sakura just gets annoyed and says, fine, whatever. I like Sasuke better anyways. From here, she would go on to start trying to flirt it up with Sasuke, saying, isn't it so great that we're all put in the same team? Actually, scratch that. Scratch that. Scratch that. Scratch. Like, everything I just said. 20 seconds. Disregard that. Hinata is actually placed on Team 7 instead of Sakura. I do not want Sakura on Team 7. I hate Sakura. With a passion. With a passion! So, uh, yeah, Sakura is not going to be put on Team 7. Instead, it's going to be Hinata. And from here, what would end up happening is, um, you know, Naruto's in the back, Hinata's swiddling her fingers, looking at Naruto the whole time, Sasuke sitting in silence thinking, I'm gonna avenge the clan, Ugh, emo stuff, emo stuff, emo stuff, you know, that's pretty much what's going through Sasuke's head. From here, Kakashi would enter, tell everybody to meet him upstairs, and introductions would commence. Not covering that because it's... It's beyond me, but from here, he would end up informing everybody to meet him at the forest training area tomorrow for them to have these little exams to see if they will truly become Genin. From here, Hinata would ask, but, um, aren't we already Genin? I was going to try to do like a feminine Hinata voice, but I don't want to embarrass myself. So, uh, maybe not. <laughs> but from here, Hinata would ask, Kakashi would say, well, tomorrow's the real test. And so they would end up all being told not to eat to which they would all pretty much not do so and arrive to the area where they will all be tested the very next day. Kakashi, of course, ends up arriving a whole three hours late. He told them to meet to meet there at 7 a.m., but he ends up arriving at 10 a.m. Now, Naruto would be a little annoyed by this, but Naruto would be like barely breaking up at this point and say, whatever. As he was pretty much sitting by the tree, as he was passed out, and Sasuke was pretty much just watching Naruto the whole time, as well as Hinata. Hinata and Sasuke for very different reasons, but nonetheless, they are pretty much both looking at Naruto very, um, very attentively. I don't know if that's even the word that I could use, but uh, yeah, they're both looking at Naruto. So Kakashi finally would end up arriving and saying, looks like um, we're all here, as he would then proceed to tell the team that they will now begin the bell exam. He would begin to explain what exactly the bell test is, and from here, everybody would be like, all right, sounds simple enough. From here, Kakashi would smirk, thinking, sounds easy enough. These kids are in for a very, very rude awakening if they think that this is going to be easy. As Kakashi would then look towards the camera and say, but uh, did you guys really think you guys were going to continue going on with the story without an interruption from the sponsors of today's video? Fandom, you're out of your minds. <laughs> from here kakashi would proceed to basically say let me tell you guys about fandom so if you guys haven't heard fandom is an online anime website which you guys can get to by going down below to the description and clicking both of the links that i have available there you should see something that says discount code 10 percent off and you may be wondering yo we get a discount code of course you guys get a discount code come on what kind of a what kind of a sellout would i be if i didn't at least offer you guys a discount code Right, so obviously, if you guys use that code, you guys can get 10% off the already very affordable fandom merch. Now, I promise, guys, this merch is high quality. I actually have a couple of hoodies myself. I have a Zoro design, and I also have a Dragon Ball design for myself. So, uh, I can firsthand tell you guys that these hoodies are really, really good quality. Up on screen, you guys should be able to see a video of a bunch of random just showcases of what they have in terms of merch to offer to you guys. So if you guys see anything you guys might like, please make sure to go down below, click on the links, buy something, and let me know down below in the comments. Also, guys, make sure that you guys choose the right sizings because the fandom merch is a little different from USA type um, um, sizing. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. But with that said, let's get right back into the what if. So let's go. 
Okay, so after Kagashi finishes explaining fandom, the whole team is just like, what? D description, you guys? What are you, what are you talking about? Kakashi would be like, uh, never mind, guys. I, as he would stop breaking the fourth wall. And from here, he would begin to pretty much tell them all that they should get into their fighting stance and attack at him with the intention to kill. Now, at this point, Kakashi would proceed to whip out a book and say, begin. At this point, all of the team would just be looking at each other like, uh, what do we do? And from this point, Naruto would see that Kakashi just literally took out a book when he's about to fight Naruto. Now, I'm not saying Naruto's cocky, but I'm also not saying Naruto's not cocky. So when Naruto sees Kakashi completely underestimating him, he's just like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. So at this point, Naruto, instead of rushing away to hide, he would proceed to literally look at Kakashi's direction and say, I'll show you how to underestimate me. As he would proceed to activate his Byakugan prowess, and immediately Naruto would rush at Kakashi's direction, surprising a base Kakashi without his Sharingan. As Kakashi would actually be hit with five palms, actually blocking a little bit of his chakra signature. Kakashi would be sent back, as at this point, Naruto would not stop the onslaught. He would immediately say, Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu, as a bunch of more Naruto would come rushing in at Kakashi's direction. Kakashi would begin to be like thrown off completely, as he's like, Yo, this kid is on another level. From here, two of the Naruto clones would, would proceed to literally like punch, like throw Naruto into Kakashi's direction. Like, Naruto jumps up into the air, and both of his feet are propelled by two of his other clones as they shoot Gale Palms, and Naruto would be sent flying right at Kakashi's direction, with Naruto having a, a literal kunai in his hand. At this point, Naruto would throw the kunai at Kakashi, and it's actually embedded with Wind Chakra, so the kunai would go flying, like, very, very fast, and Kakashi's eyes would widen as he would say, what the? From here? Kakashi would use the substitution jutsu and I need a second to breathe because whew, it's a little hard to keep talking for like 20 minutes on end and never get any breaks. Anyways, from here, Kakashi would use the substitution jutsu and he would proceed to pretty much just start being like, that was a close one as Naruto would appear right behind him. And at this point, Sasuke would be thinking he's showing me up again. I'm not letting that happen. Sasuke would come rushing in thinking that he's going to prove himself today and he would shoot a fireball jutsu at Naruto and Kakashi's direction. To which Naruto would then say, you're getting in my way. He would proceed to jump up into the air avoiding the fireball. Kakashi would do the same and in the air Kakashi and Naruto would begin to throw hands. As this, like, like as Kakashi is, no, as Sasuke is watching this, he's just like, they're on a completely different level. He would simply be thinking that. But from here, Naruto would proceed to quite literally say, all right, I think it's time I stopped holding back. But as soon as Kakashi lands, he would think the same, and he would quite literally lift his headband up. With Sasuke seeing this, he would say, how did you get that eye? As he would be completely enraged, thinking that this guy probably killed a bunch of Uchiha or desecrated Uchiha bodies to get that eye. Seeing as Kakashi is not a, a, um, an Uchiha, Sasuke would be very, very angry at this. The fact that some Nanuchiha person does has the dojutsu of his clan. So Sasuke would rush in blindly with rage, but um, Kakashi using the Sharingan would completely drop uh, Sasuke and knock him out without a second's notice. But as that was happening, Naruto would activate his twin lion jutsu and he would rush at Kakashi's direction. From here, Kakashi would take out two kunais as he throws them up into the air, they spin and he catches them, and he would proceed to start basically trying to dodge all of Naruto's attacks. From here, Hinata would say, Naruto-kun, as she would rush in and begin to basically fight Kakashi from behind. So now he has two Hyuga clan members pressing him with taijutsu, like close hand-to-hand -hand combat, two people. He probably would have been able to handle Naruto with mid-difficulty, but now, this has become high difficulty. Not only does he have one person pressing him, but two. And it's not like it's just like one person and a clone. It's like two very powerful individuals. So from here, Naruto would slightly start getting the upper hand. But this is when, sorry guys, I ended up hitting my mic by accident. But this is when Hinata would end up saying, I can help too. And she would say, Gale Palm and shoot a Gale Palm right into Kakashi's stomach, sending him flying back. As Kakashi would say, fine, since you guys want to fight close range, how about I even out the playing field? 
he would proceed to weave hand signs and out of nowhere two twin water dragons would appear as at this point a bunch of chakra would be taken up by that attack but naruto and hinata would both be engulfed by these water dragons and they would be like slammed into trees simultaneously at this point they would both be knocked out and kakashi would end up walking over to their unconscious bodies as he's like you two put up quite a fight as naruto would literally just be like passed out but he would wake up almost instantly right as kakashi's in front of him naruto would say don't underestimate me as he proceeds to say 64 palm trigram immediately he would begin to unleash an onslaught of palms on kakashi's body something that he has never felt before and kakashi being completely caught off guard would be hit by all 64 palms by naruto as kakashi's body would collapse onto the ground naruto would grab the bells and say we won and at this point kakashi would be laying on the ground just thinking this kid is a monster at this point he would just be like all right yep they, they won and from here what would end up happening is kakashi would end up telling the team all right they passed he literally can't tell them a thing so uh they ended up passing and he's kind of just going to sit there and recover so about three days would, no not not three days. it's really not that hard let's say one day goes by kakashi recovers from the blows and the next day they would end up going on their first uh d rank mission which is capturing cats this would pretty much go on for about two weeks and naruto being hit by a water dragon would decide that yeah that hurts a lot naruto would have finally been a, a like completely completely outclassed by kakashi and naruto would realize that if it wasn't for the fact that he caught kakashi off guard kakashi would have ended up pretty much mopping the floor with him with that dojutsu of his so what naruto decides is that he's actually going to start training for not only other people's satisfaction but for him to get stronger at this point a desire of wanting to become powerful would actually start coming over naruto and training would suddenly stop being a random medial task and then start becoming fun naruto fighting kakashi would have realized that he does have a little bit of a love for battle however during the nighttime one thing that naruto would do as well is practice a certain jutsu which you guys are already aware of the flying rising now at this point you guys are like yo you need to chill out zether you gave this man like like twin lion jutsu you gave this man rasing uh no not rasing on yet not yet you guys might be like yet yo pause come on now you guys know i was gonna give him the rasing on later on when he meets shirai you you guys already know that that's the formula to these whips but he is going to be learning the flying rise during these two weeks and every single day he would get one step closer to mastering this jutsu eventually after two weeks would pass naruto and the team would end up going reporting to haruzen for their payment as naruto would end up basically addressing the elephant saying that these missions are just far too easy these missions don't and actually do anything for them. these missions are boring and Hiruzen would look at naruto's direction saying i understand naruto what other mission would you like naruto would say something else not this as Haruzen would nod his head saying that this team shows splendid shinobi so in spirit of that he's gonna give them a higher rank job and so Haruzen would proceed to pretty much tell the team that you know what he'll give them a good job from here a drunk Tazuna would walk inside as he's like you know what I mean like uh excuse me the man is just drunk you know what I mean the man is just like like he is wasted so uh, he comes in, he starts disrespecting the team, and then walks out. And the team is just like filled with mixed emotions. Like, who is that guy? Hiruzen would apologize for that and say that that's the bridge builder, the man that they will be protecting. Immediately, all of them are like, maybe we should have stick to cats. As at this point, they would all get their stuff ready, and Naruto would go home to practice the flying Raijin Jutsu one more time. At this point, he would write something on a kunai, and from here, Hisashi would actually catch Naruto trying to practice this certain jutsu, as he would tell him stories about his father, Minato. For the first time, Naruto wouldn't just be compared to the fourth, but he would actually finally learn what the fourth was like, 
So, Naruto would smile after hearing these countless stories about his father. As Asashi would explain, no one ever did tell you about your mother, did they? He would explain things about Kushina, the hot habanero of the Hidden Leaf Village. As Naruto would smile, with tears running down his eyes, would say, thank you. As, you know, with new, like, with new drive in his heart, he would end up making his way towards the village gates, as now they would begin their first mission. And from here, they would walk out of the village. About, let's say, 45 minutes into their walk, they would end up encountering a puddle. Now, immediately when Naruto sees this puddle, he is no fool. He immediately can tell that this is Genjutsu. So from here, he would continue walking. Kakashi would fake getting killed. Sasuke would stop the demon brother. And the other one that Naruto originally almost ended up getting hit by would end up getting completely devastated by Naruto. As he just hits him with a palm so powerful that it just causes the demon brother to be slammed into a tree. And from here, what would end up going down is naruto pretty much just smiles seeing as you know in his eyes that was pretty easy so from here he would say nothing but a couple of bandits as they would proceed to be like asking tazuna what the meaning of this was saying like yo like isn't this supposed to be c rank there usually isn't bandits in c rank missions with kakashi saying that he's done missions like this before and they're usually don't go south like this by the way, guys, in case you guys hear a little bit of background noise a little uh, in a bit, I do apologize for that. But that is like the gigantic trash collector, like garbage truck just coming by. So uh, please bear with me for a couple minutes. I'm sorry, guys, but it's out of control. So um, actually, let me just pause the recording because nobody wants to hear that. Okay, the noise has finally stopped. So why don't we get back into the story? So what ends up happening here is, let's say, Naruto proceeds to essentially walk off with Team 7 until eventually a powerful, powerful mist can be seen coming in from the distance. When the fog thickens more and more, this is when out of nowhere Kakashi would sense something and Naruto would as well, as both of them would yell, DODGE! They would all pretty much duck under a blade which would come in at insane speeds out of nowhere a man would land on top of that blade and he would look towards Kakashi's direction saying Kakashi Hatake we finally meet as Kakashi would end up seeing Zabuza and from here this battle would literally go just like it does in canon until Kakashi is trapped in the water prison jutsu from here with Naruto seeing this all playing playing out Naruto would think I have to save him as at this point, Kakashi would be thinking and saying to the team that they need to get out of here, that regardless of how powerful they are, they're probably going to die if they fight against this man because he's truly going to fight them with the intent to kill. So Kakashi at this point would just be thinking that he failed Minato and just thinking that like he should have done things better, like he should have whipped out a Sharingan sooner, you know, thinking things along those lines. But at this point, Naruto would reach into his back pocket as he then throws a kunai at the direction of Zabuza and Naruto would proceed to appear behind Zabuza as Zabuza thinks you missed me. Naruto behind him would say, did I? As out of nowhere, Zabuza's eyes would widen as Naruto would in the air catch the kunai as he would quite literally then say, twin lion bomb, as immediately he would slam a gigantic this with blue flames of like a, a lion aura right into Zabuza's back as Zabuza would quite literally get punt like hit so hard in the back he, he would feel a little bit of his spine literally crack as he proceeds to fall into the water that he was standing on and from here Kakashi would fall onto both knees onto the water saying thank you Naruto as he would then get up and say leave the rest of me Naruto would say you sure and Kakashi would say, don't worry about me. This should have been my job. I should have never let my guard down. You can let me handle this, Naruto. Sasuke at this point would have just been watching like with his mouth agape. He would be in complete awe at what Naruto just did. As Naruto would then proceed to pretty much just run back towards Sasuke, Sok uh, Sasuke and Hinata's direction as well as the bridge builder. And what would happen next is Zabuza would rise from the waters with anger in his head, in his face, so much bloodlust saying, that damn kid, I'll kill you. As he would immediately proceed to like rush at Naruto's direction, but Kakashi would stop him right in front of Zabuza. 
As Zabuza would say, get out of my way, Kakashi. This doesn't concern you. As Kakashi would say, oh, I think it concerns me very much. At this point, Kakashi would then look at Zabuza as he would say, very well, have it your way. And from here, Zabuza would begin to pretty much create a bunch of jutsus, the water dragon jutsu. As he would do this, he would see Kakashi creating the exact same hand signs that Zabuza is making. And Zabuza would say, what? As he would be thrown off guard, then immediately a, a water dragon would come rushing in at Zabuza, completely knocking Zabuza out. At this point, Zabuza would literally just be laying there as, you know, he would then get back up and say, Kakashi, as when he's slightly getting up, this is when a giant, like a little needle would come flying in, barely being able to be seen as a Senban would come flying in and it would stab right into Zabuza's neck. From here, Haku would come in and grab Zabuza as he basically says he's a hidden miss tracking ninja, yada yada yada, thank you so much for helping him out. And Team 7 would look at this as Kakashi having a lot, a lot less chakra than he usually would, would basically just let him get away. Because of the fact that if Kakashi was to fight this ninja, he doesn't know what his odds would be. So from here, Kakashi would pass out, Naruto would catch him. And he would then look at Kakashi's direction as he would say, let's go. As from here, he would ask Tazuna what they're going to do next. And Tazuna would say, let's go to my house. From here, they would end up making their way over to the bridge builder's house. And on the way there, Sasuke would not say a word. Like, Sasuke would remain completely silent. But Hinata, on the other hand, would say, Naruto, that was impressive. You know what I mean? Like, she's thinking that, you know, he's impressive. He's getting stronger and stronger every day and Naruto would say thanks Hinata but to tell you the truth that last jutsu I just used definitely took a toll on my chakra from here she would say oh really Naruto would say yeah a little bit as he would rub the back of his head smile and then proceed to walk to, you know forward it's not it's not as much as like what you guys would expect from the real Naruto he pretty much just scratches the back of his head and says yeah <laughs> as he walks off and from here they would make it to Tazuna's house when they enter the bridge builder's house, they would immediately be greeted to his daughter Tsunami, as she would proceed to pretty much start giving all of them a full course meal, saying that thank you so much for helping my dad, yada yada yada. They would thank her and they would proceed to gobble down the food. As from here, they would all end up doing their own separate things. Naruto, however, would then walk over towards Hinata and ask her if she wants to train with him. And Hinata would immediately go red in the face saying, train? As immediately Naruto's like, yeah, it'll be fun. I mean, it'll be fun training against somebody other than Neji for once. As she's like, oh, right. Immediately, he and Hinata would go outside as about, let's say, one week would go by until Kakashi could finally wake up. From here, Naruto and Hinata would go on to spend hours on end training outside and Hinata would actually get a pretty significant power boost in this. I don't know if you guys remember but Hinata was throwing some pretty solid hands with Neji in the original version of Naruto. So her training a lot harder with this Naruto was actually giving her tips and tricks, not being rude, trying to basically let her learn at her own pace is being so well for Hinata. Not only that, but Naruto and Hinata's relationship as a whole is growing because of this, because Naruto is slowly starting to break that barrier of like just completely being shy and all of this stuff. So from here, Naruto and Hinata would continue growing as ninjas, and they would continue getting more powerful as the days go by. So what would end up happening here is basically... Sasuke would pretty much seeing this would be like, oh, no, nah, I'm not going to let Naruto get even stronger. From here, Sasuke would begin to do his own crazy little training saying that Naruto's not going to get stronger than he is, that he's a, uh, an Uchiha. He's powerful. If anyone's going to be get, being the strongest in the, in the team, it's going to be him. So we would have Sasuke training with a vendetta on his mind to become stronger than Naruto. And from here... What would end up going on is Kakashi would finally wake up and when he does wake up he would end up having to teach Sasuke how to water walk and tree walk because simply put this Sasuke still has not learned that Hinata and Naruto on the other hand yeah they're well adapt with that so Sasuke would then grit his teeth as he ends up having to spend an entire day learning how to do it 
Eventually, though, Hinata would walk over towards Sasuke, saying, Um, Sasuke couldn't. I, I can help you. As Sasuke's like, Beat it. I can do this by myself. You know what I mean? He has a little bit of anger boiling up within him because of the fact that, from the way he sees things, Naruto is just showing him up at every single chance they get. And it's getting to Sasuke's nerves. Whole, like, really, like a lot, a whole lot. It's really, really, really getting into Sasuke's nerves. So, with that said, what ends up going down here is they would all pretty much just look at each other and be like, well, okay. As Naruto and Hinata would continue their own training with Kakashi, you know, helping them with their own endeavors. And at this point, by the end, Sasuke wouldn't be able to learn how to tree walk because his mind is just so clouded with rage and these like different emotions. Until Kakashi finally walks up to him and has a talk with Sasuke. He would say, what's on your mind? Sasuke looks at Kakashi and says, what do you care? Get away from me. I can learn this on my own. From here, Kakashi would walk over towards Sasuke saying, from, well, from where I'm standing, it doesn't look like you're going to be learning anything the way that you're going about things. As Sasuke would say, what would you know about it? You would know nothing about it. From here, we would basically have Kakashi being like, you have too much rage. You need to calm down before you even attempt to control your chakra in the way that you're trying to. Visualize it. Try to push all your chakra to the points of your feet and then control that chakra. You don't need too much. You don't need too little. You need to be right in the middle. Sasuke would say, <sighs> he would breathe in and out as he would then finally get the secret to tree walking. From here, Sasuke would have a smirk on his face saying, I'm one step closer to getting stronger than that Naruto brat. As from here, Kakashi would say, why do you always need to get stronger than everybody else? You don't need to be stronger than Naruto. You don't need to be stronger than Hinata yourself or even your older brother as hearing that sasuke would say what makes you think you know anything about it and from here kakashi would say calm down i'm just trying to get at that you only need to be stronger than yourself there the rest will follow i've seen other people go down the path that you're going down trust me it never ends well sasuke would look at him and say what makes you think you understand maybe if i killed everyone in your family Maybe then you'd get how I feel. As Kakashi would say, it's an interesting theory, but I'm afraid you're a little late to put it to the test. Sasuke would quiet down as he would think, what does he mean? Kakashi would give him a, a smile as he would say, all those people that you're talking about have already died. As Sasuke would just be like, huh? And from here, Kakashi would tell him, but that doesn't mean I'm going to freak out means I'm going to push to be better, maybe live out their dreams through myself, because I don't know what the real path is. I could, I could be vengeful like you and try to get revenge on those who have done me wrong, but that won't lead to anything. Trust me, Sasuke, revenge only leads to bloodshed, and that will lead you nowhere. From here, Sasuke would sit down as hearing those words come from Kakashi's mouth would just resonate with him. And from here, he would walk inside to the dinner table as all of them are just enjoying some of Tsunami's cooking. From here, however, what would end up going down is all of them pretty much have that little feast and about one more week would go by until eventually they're all on the bridge helping Tazuna build it until out of nowhere, a, a bunch of foggy mist would appear out of nowhere. And this is when all of them would be on their guard. Hinata would be told to protect the bridge builder as Naruto would say, actually, Sasuke, you protect the bridge builder. He would look at Hinata and say, if anything, my and Hinata's teamwork will be more efficient for this mission. And Sasuke would be like, me? Protect the bridge builder? You trying to say I'm weaker than her? As Naruto would say, that's not what I'm trying to get at at all, Sasuke. Just do what I ask, please. It's for the mission. And from here, Sasuke would just be like, to hell with that. So Hinata would be stuck protecting the bridge builder. And from here, what would end up going down is Haku and Zabuza appear on the bridge. From here, Kakashi versus Zabuza's fight would pretty much go as it does in canon. And then we would now get on with Haku versus Naruto's fight. Immediately, Haku would rush in trying to use Taijutsu against Naruto and shooting a bunch of low level ranking 
uh, ninjutsu attacks at Naruto, which Naruto was easily able to dodge and counterattack each and every single one of Haku's uh, taijutsu attacks. This would lead to a quick little 20 second uh, swap of hands, I guess you could say, as Haku would there and then realize she's not going to, or no, sorry, he is not going to be beating Naruto in this way whatsoever. So what Haku ends up doing is pretty much like uh, creating the Ice Crystal Mirror Jutsu around Naruto. And from here is where the battle would start slowly changing. Haku would then begin throwing a bunch of Senban as Naruto at pretty much light speed. And from here, what would end up going down is Naruto would end up actually dodging the first couple of uh, Senban that are going to be thrown at him. But this is when one would actually end up piercing him on the leg and Naruto would decide that he has no time for this. So immediately, he would put his hands out in a very familiar position and begin spinning in a circular motion, as all of the Senban would quite literally just ricochet off of him. On the outside, Sasuke would be watching as he would say, I'll be damned if Naruto shows me up this time again. He would jump up into the air saying, Fire style, fireball jutsu, shooting a gigantic fireball right at one of the ice crystal mirrors as it does nothing. And Sasuke would think, what? But from here, Naruto would continue dodging a bunch more Senban as Sasuke would simply be on the outskirts and think, useless. But from here, what would end up going down is Naruto would proceed to quite literally like stop spinning midair as he would look and inside of his pocket as he would throw a kunai outside of the ice crystal mirrors area or domain or range i guess you could say as from here what naruto would do is pretty much then use the flying rising technique to get himself out of the ice crystal mirrors because i don't know if you guys remember but the ice crystal mirrors wasn't like a complete dome that had no openings it had openings so luckily the kunai was able to like escape from the ice crystal mirror before haku was able to like jump at it and grab it midair so from here what ended up going down is naruto pretty much teleports out of the of the jutsu and what ends up happening after this is haku was just like what he was able to escape and from here naruto would just literally like get into a taijutsu stance as he would say the real battle begins now as haku was just like very well from here he would stop holding back and as a whole and he would immediately blitz at naruto's direction but Naruto, however, would actually be able to evade these blows and attacks. However, this is when Sasuke would come in and get in the way, causing Naruto to have to mess up with some of his attacks in order to not let Sasuke get hurt. So Haku would start actually getting the upper hand. And from here, this is when Haku would then go on to create another Ice Crystal Mirror Jutsu. This one far more powerful than the last one. And... Um, it's gonna be a lot harder to escape so from here naruto would use the palm rotation jutsu to dodge a bunch of senban until eventually it's just not enough from here sasuke would then get pierced with a bunch of senban and naruto would have to think of one quick way to finish this battle like as fast as he possibly can from here what would end up going down is naruto would throw another kunai except this time slow so that Haku has the opportunity to catch it midair. And when Haku does end up catching it, what ends up happening is Naruto would immediately teleport right behind Haku. And in Minato-like fashion, would smash, would smash a, a uh, lion barrage fist. As he would proceed to slam Haku down onto the ground as like Haku would ricochet. And when Naruto was coming back down from the air, he would slam the kunai into Haku's back. As he would then drag it across. And from here, Naruto would say, it's done. As he throws the kunai at the ground and then looks over to Sasuke saying, Sasuke, Sasuke, you all right? From here, Sasuke would open his eyes and say, yeah, fine. Bye, Naruto. As he would wave his hand at Naruto's direction, and Naruto would say, What's your deal, man? I literally just finished saving your life, and all you can do is yell? Like, what is up with you? What's your problem? From here, Sasuke would say, Don't worry about my, my problems. Get the hell out of my face. And from here, Naruto would say, It's entitled. I think you're the main character of the world or something like that. As he would walk off, and from here, 
this is when Kakashi would finish his battle with Zabuza. From here, I'm really going to spare you guys this next part because it's really unimportant. We all know how this is going to go down. Gato's men would arrive, but Team 7 would, of course, end up chasing them off. And after this, the Great, uh, the great Naruto Bridge would still be named the Great Naruto Bridge. And that's pretty much how this whole little Land of the Waves arc is going to pretty much be ending. Next, we're going to definitely have to get into the Junin Exams arc. So normally, I would usually cover their trip back to Kona, but this time, I just feel like I there, there, there's no point, to be honest. So what ends up going down in this time is Naruto would actually end up pretty much walking into the village. Now, normally, what ends up going down here is Naruto ends up chasing Konohamaru, he bumps into Konkuro, and then we would have the meetup between Team Gara versus Team 7. However, Naruto doesn't know Konohamaru, so when he sees the young boy, he's just like, whatever, and he proceeds to walk forward with his team, ending up making his way towards the Hyuga compound, as at this point, Kakashi would go to Hiruzen and inform him about the mission, also telling Hiruzen that Naruto used the flying Raijin during the mission, not once, but three times in total. And this would shock Hiruzen because he's like, the flying Raijin, are you sure Kakashi? Kakashi would nod his head saying that every single day, it seems that Naruto's growing rapidly more, um, ra uh, just faster every single day. It's completely unprecedented. We've never had another Shinobi, like uh, other than Minato grow at this rate. And at this rate, he'll probably be even more powerful than his father in about two years. From here, Hiruzen would say, I see. And after this, he would say, well, just keep your eye on Naruto and make sure that he he makes it to see, uh, to become a splendid shinobi. He would say, that's all for now. He would then end up paying them for a B rank mission because that mission was a lot harder than expected. And from here, all of them would get their money and also be told about the Chunin exams. To which from here, this is when Naruto would say, so that's why I saw those other ninja in the village walking around with different headbands. As Kakashi would say, exactly, Naruto. From here, Team 7 would end up accepting the Chunin exams, but, but uh, Sasuke would end up telling Kakashi that he wants to have a word with him. From here, Kakashi would be like, I have a word with me. What for, Sasuke? And Sasuke would say, I want you to help me get stronger. I need to be stronger than Naruto so that one day I can fulfill my destiny. And from here, Kakashi would say, this is about him, isn't it? As Sasuke would say, it's not about that. It's about me getting stronger. This whole time that we went on the last mission, I felt like a liability, and I'll never feel like that again. Kakashi, train me. From here, Kakashi would have a slight little smile, as from here, he would train Sasuke for about a week. He's not going to be learning Chidori, he's not going to be copying Rock Lee's Taijutsu, his Taijutsu improves a bit, his chakra control improves a little bit, and that's pretty much all that happens during that week. Oh, he also does get a little bit of a durability amp because of the fact that Kakashi proceeds to wail on this kid during the training that they're going to be doing. By the way, guys, in case you guys notice that the levels of audio end up shifting like from high to low every now and then, that is simply because I turn my head away from the mic and it tends to do that every now and then. But um, yeah, that being said, what ends up going down here at this point is they all pretty much end up having their own individual small 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 training arcs however one interesting thing to happen is Hiruzen actually ends up calling Naruto down to the office and telling him that his abilities are quite impressive he would then basically say your father Minato would be proud and Naruto would say yeah, I bet as you know Hiruzen just basically ends up telling Naruto to do his best during the Trinity exams and that he's going to be keeping a close eye on him Naruto would think all right as from here, what would essentially end up happening is they all end up making their way towards the Chunin Exams Tower, where they're all going to be taking, well, the Chunin Exams. From here, they would end up actually running into Team Guy. And this is when the fateful battle between Sasuke versus Ga uh, Lee, sorry, not Guy, but Lee would end up going down. Now, in case you guys thought that one week of training was going to be changing this outcome of a full only Taijutsu battle, yeah, you guys are mistaken. This Sasuke never even ended up awakening his Sharingan during the mission against Haku because he never had that same experience that the normal Sasuke did. 
Naruto took out Haku before Sasuke even had that that moment in the original canon where he was able to unlock his Sharingan. So this Sasuke is exponentially weaker than the one that we have in the original. Not even stage one Sharingan. What a disappointment. But from here, what ends up going down is Naruto would see Neji and say, so looks like you're going to be here too. <laughs> looks like the competition isn't that great this year. Neji would grit his teeth saying that he has no idea and that this time the battle's going to go different. Naruto would then rub the back of his head and say, what's our record? Like 1000 to none? As Neji would grit his teeth saying, you have no idea what you're talking about. And from here, Lee would say, you're the one who has fought Neji all those times. I would love to battle you. From here, you know, he would pretty much just be like, nah, I'm good. But you can fight Sasuke, though. Sasuke would be like, oh my god, you're a new Chiha. No, not Lee would be like, you're a new Chiha. He would say, oh, definitely fight me. As from here, what would end up pretty much going down is Sasuke is like, huh, I don't have time to fight someone like you. And they would end up fighting, but he would get mopped, completely mopped the floor. And after this, they end up having the written exam, which I'm going to completely skip over because nobody cares about it. So skipping over, we basically then get to when they're all outside and they are all pretty much getting ready to have their um, to pretty much have uh, the explanation of the force of death given to them. So from here, Anko would proceed to essentially explain what the force of death is, saying yada, yada, yada. This is how it's all going to go down. So, um, yeah, and from here, the entire team would just be like, perfect. I mean, sounds great. So what would end up going down is Team 7 would grab their scroll and they would end up making a game plan. And by they, I mean Naruto and Hinata. Sasuke would just be thinking, I haven't stopped taking L's since literally I joined Team 7. I haven't stopped taking an L since I joined Team 7. This is not good. So Naruto and Hinata would say, all right, what we're going to do is stay together the entire time. And hopefully we're going to head towards the tower's direction. By there, there should be a bunch of opponents, maybe some traps. So definitely be on guard for that. And from here, they would all end up rushing towards the area. This version of Naruto never ends up having to be like, yo, I got to take a leak. So they never end up having the moment where uh, Orochimaru sneaks in uh, by basically turning himself into Naruto and Sasuke never ends up being like, you're not Naruto. Naruto's too dumb to remember the password. That never happens. Instead, what ends up happening is Orochimaru would pop up in his grass village ninja state. And this is when the team would get on guard saying, what do you want? From here, Orochimaru would say, I want your scroll lying through his teeth. But from here, what ends up essentially going down is the whole team is on guard and Naruto would say that this person is giving off an awful amount of chakra. So from here, Naruto would proceed to dig into his uh, kunai pouch as he would think, I gotta take this guy out now. He seems dangerous. So from here, he would look at Hinata, nod his head, look at Sasuke and say, go! Formation 2, as Sasuke would jump up into the air and say, Fire style, fire Phoenix Jutsu, as a gigantic Phoenix of flame would come in out of nowhere, as Hinata would rush in at Orochimaru, and she would try to get into her close hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, Orochimaru would be able to dodge all of the blows, grab Hinata by the arm, and throw her away, as at this moment, Orochimaru would see a kunai flying in right in front of his face, as Orochimaru would smile, thinking, Child's play. He would go in to grab it, but before he can grab it, Naruto would flying Raijin in front of Orochimaru, grabbing the kunai and saying, too late. From here, Naruto would go to slash at Orochimaru's throat. However, before he does, Orochimaru would regurgitate himself out of there. Naruto would close his eyes for a second saying, ugh. And from here, Orochimaru would appear in a whole new body, with the last one having blood just spewing out of it. As at this point, what ends up happening is Orochimaru is just like, boy as the flying Raijin as at this point Naruto would look at Orochimaru and Orochimaru would say <laughs> the son of the fourth the resemblance is uncanny but from here Orochimaru would begin to say impressive you're pretty strong for your age but I'm not here for you brat as he would look at Sasuke's direction and say I'm here for Sasuke is at this point, Orochimaru would rush in at Sasuke's direction with Naruto saying, you're not going to get to him before you get through me. 
immediately activating the twin lion jutsu and he would say 64 palm trigram as he would rush in orochimaru's direction orochimaru would think this is child's play as he would proceed to pretty much take the full onslaught of naruto's um of naruto's 64 palm jutsu and when the jutsu was done, it would be revealed that the body of Orochimaru would pretty much start turning into mud as it starts decomposing right in front of Naruto. It's just like, what the? And at this point, his Byakugan is activated. So for him not to see what Orochimaru did is just so impressive. Keep in mind, this Naruto is extremely powerful, but Orochimaru made child's play out of four-tailed bloodlust in Naruto. So this one doesn't really stand that much of a, of a chance. Even though he stands a little bit, not that much. So what would end up pretty much happening here is Naruto would notice as Sasuke pretty much just got bit on the neck. From here, Orochimaru would smile and say bye bye as he would quite literally like out of nowhere, like Orochimaru would quite literally start sinking into the ground, like just sink into the earth and he would like literally just like wink or something like that as he goes into the earth and he's nowhere to be seen from this point naruto would look around searching for his chakra signature but nothing as at this point he would rush over to sasuke and be like sasuke you are right sasuke would see ah yelling out in pain as immediately all of them are just like ah oh, what do we do what do we do what do we do but they would end up pretty much rushing towards the tower as they would end up seeing some random mist village ninja. They would end up taking their scroll and from here they would rush uh, Sasuke to the tower. Now being as this version doesn't end up running into the sound getting, that situation with Sasuke breaking their arms never happens. So Kakashi is able to actually seal the curse mark before anything can be taken any further. And what, what happened here is Sasuke would be told that he should never use that. But since he never got a glimpse of what the curse mark's power was, Sasuke doesn't feel that drive of wanting to activate the curse mark, which is one good thing that comes out of this. However, one other good thing that ends up coming out of this is because of the great pain that Sasuke felt, he felt so much anger of not being able to do anything about it. And that in turn caused Sasuke to awaken his Sharingan for the first time. So now what would end up going down is Sasuke pretty much has about two days to rest with the rest of the team also having that time and Naruto and Hinata going off to their own devices. From here, they would have the preliminaries, which the Naruto versus Kiba fight. Come on, guys. This is going to be a full on just obliteration of Kiba. Kiba would use the Wolf Fang over Fang Jutsu as he says, come on, Akamaru. But Naruto would stand in front of him holding one palm out as he literally catches the drill like Jutsu in one hand and then split or Kiba and Akamaru and throwing them in opposite directions as Kiba would immediately say Gale Palm, shooting two palms at different directions, hitting Akamaru, causing him to go into unconsciousness and hitting Kiba, causing him to get sent flying back. As before Kiba can even open his eyes, Naruto would be right in front of him saying checkmate as from here kiba would say no but naruto would slam his palm right into kiba's stomach knocking kiba out completely from here what would follow is a complete annihilation of sasuke's opponent neji versus hinata ends up going down but seeing as neji wants to send a message he would beat on hinata a lot worse than he can it. however when neji actually gets stopped instead of what happens in the original with neji just being stopped by himself it would actually be five ninja who are stopping him naruto being one of them and um that's pretty much how that ends up going down and rock lee versus gara still happens just like it does in the original from here they're all given one month to train and naruto ends up going to the infirmary with hinata telling her to be strong and that she's going to be making it through this not to worry that that attack definitely couldn't have been enough to put her out of commission. Hinata would smile saying, Naruto, as she would pass out. And from here, what would end up going down is, let's say, let's see, normally I'd stop the recording by now, but I honestly feel like I'm having a blast recording this. So I'm just going to keep going maybe for another like six, five minutes. All right. So um, let's see. So what ends up going down here? is they all pretty much end up just kind of doing their own thing for about one month naruto 
ends up meeting Jiraiya about one week into the one month training. And he was simply on his way to the hot springs because he wanted to have a little relaxed time when he spots an old man with white hair perving on a bunch of girls. Naruto would say, what are you doing, old man? You better get down from there before I have to make you. As Jiraiya looks at Naruto and says, you look just like your father. From here, Naruto would say, not another one. And from here, Jiraiya would say, my name is Jiraiya. I'm the legendary Toad Sage. And Naruto would be like, the huda huda huh now? As Jiraiya is just like, you don't, you, you don't know who I am? Naruto would be like, no, now get lost. From here, Jiraiya would smile and say, well, kid, if you don't know me as that, then you'll know me as this. I'm your I'm your godfather. And from here, Naruto would be like, my, my what now? As Jiraiya is like, yep, you better believe it, kid. I'm your godfather. Naruto would immediately be like, oh, God. Why am I always related to these weirdos? From here, Jiraiya would be like, huh? That kid just called me a weirdo? And Naruto would be like, yeah, I'm leaving. From here, Jiraiya would literally have to convince Naruto of training with him. And Jiraiya would end up pretty much being like, all right, how about this, Naruto? I challenge you to a fight. If I win, then you have to train with me. Naruto would end up fighting against Jiraiya, showing off jutsus like the twin lion, the gentle fist, the flying Raijin, which actually does catch Jiraiya off guard, but seeing as his student was literally Minato, one of the best users of flying Raijin, I think Jiraiya would definitely be able to counter Naruto mid-air. And from here, what would end up going down is Naruto seeing the power of the legendary Toad Sage would think, okay, okay, I'm all ears. I'm all ears, go ahead and train me. From here, what would end up going down is the rest of the month would pass as Naruto would learn the summoning jutsu, the Rasengan, and he would continue mastering the flying Raijin, learning more and more about the jutsu as each and every single day, the chakra cost of using the flying Raijin would go down and down and down. Until eventually, Jiraiya helps Naruto finish mastering it by the end of the one month training arc. And so, from here, we can finally get to the most, like, uh, exciting battle, I guess you could say, of the whole little tuning exams. Naruto versus Meiji Hyuga. From here, what would end up going down is, mm, let's see, Naruto would end up making his way towards the stadium. And Neji would pretty much already be there waiting for him with a smirk on his face saying, You may be powerful, Naruto, but it's my destiny to defeat you today. As Naruto would say, Yeah, 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 you ruin your destiny, Neji. Let's get this over with so we can go back to training like usual. From here, Neji would say, <laughs> As he would proceed to immediately say, All right, getting into a stance, as he would rush in at Naruto and begin to throw palms with Naruto. This would be literally just like Hinata versus Neji, except this time, each and every single time Neji throws a palm technique, Naruto would counterattack it each and every time. Weave, counterattack, weave, counterattack. So every time Neji throws a blow, Naruto would dodge it and hit him back with twice the power. Until eventually, Naruto ends up landing 32 strikes on Neji, and Neji would be forced to fall back. As Naruto would say, my Byakugan prowess far exceeds your own. Rushing in at Neji's direction and saying, how about I show you? As he would then say, 64 palm, 1 palm, 2 palm, 32 palm, 64 palm. Until eventually he finishes the whole entire attack and Neji's body would just fall. Like it just falls like a tree getting cut down. At this point, Naruto would walk away. And at this point, he would create a shadow clone as it stays behind and picks Neji up, extending his hand out. As Neji is taken to the infirmary and he gets re he gets recovered in about like one day. But Naruto would go back up into the stands as the rest of the tuning exams battles would go down until finally Sasuke versus Gara would end up eventually happening. Now, I would usually tell you guys, this is going to be so much different than canon. Sasuke rushes in at Gara, uses the Jidori, Jidori boons. Yeah, no, it literally just stays like canon because this Sasuke is like weaker and stronger than the original Sasuke in some aspects. So this battle pretty much ends up going just like it does in canon. And from here, the story of Naruto really doesn't have that many changes because what would end up happening here is Sasuke ends up causing Gara to change into his Shikaku state, 
Thara would end up running out into the forest, Tamari and Konkura would rush after him, Orochi and Maru versus Hiruza would end up going down, Kakashi and Maikai would end up pretty much saving the villages, uh, the villagers of the Leaf Village, and Naruto would end up rushing after Sasuke, as Hinata would pretty much just like look at Naruto and say, Naruto kun! As she rushes after Naruto, I'm never doing that again. I'm so sorry, guys. As she rushes after Naruto right behind him, saying, I'm coming with you. So, for the first fight that ends up pretty much going down, which I'm going to be saying is Tamari this time, Hinata ends up getting into a fight against Tamari, which is not that good of a matchup because Tamari is a long range fighter, while Hinata is a close range combatant. So, this fight is actually going to go in the favor of tamari psych you thought i was gonna say that absolutely not hinata would high difficulty end up beating tamari when i say high difficulty it's pretty high difficulty because she had a hard time getting close to tamari but ultimately it ended up happening and from here Konkuro would end up pretty much fighting against naruto as naruto takes Konkuro out with mid difficulty he uses the flying rising to catch Konkuro off guard, destroying his puppet and then beating on Konkuro, which isn't which wasn't that hard considering Konkuro is a puppet master, not exactly a taijutsu specialist. So from here, then Naruto would uh, pretty much catch up to Sasuke before Sasuke even gets the chance to fight with Gara, and he would end up summoning Gamabunta. As Gara would end up transforming into Chukaku, Naruto ends up pretty much pretty much. Uh, causing Gar to wake up this time much easier than in canon because again he has the flying Raijin so he throws the flying Raijin marker smacks Gara across the head Gara pretty much wakes up causing Shukaku to go back inside of his body and that pretty much concludes the tuning exams arc from here just like many of you guys would expect he Ruzen would end up of course losing his ability to use his uh to use his life his subscription to life literally gets cancelled, and Orochimaru would end up losing his ability to use his arms. From here, Jiraiya would end up telling Naruto that they need to go look for the next Hokage, and uh, that's pretty much what ends up going down from there. What ends up happening afterwards, however, is they basically end up going on this trip, where Jiraiya and Naruto get to know each other. Before during the one month, they mostly had training and Naruto slightly got to know Jiraiya, but this, this trip to find Tsunade is where it will solidify the relationship that Naruto and Jiraiya have with each other for the series of Naruto. This solidifies that relationship that Naruto and Jiraiya will have. So what I'm basically going to be having happen is they end up basically, you know, doing their thing. They end up getting stronger. They end up pretty much uh, growing as ninjas and they would eventually end up arriving to a random uh town where jiraiya decides you know what well, he's gonna go after some kitty and he does so by giving naruto the hotel key and from here naruto would be in his room pretty much just reading a manga as eventually he hears a knock at his door and from here naruto would go to the door as he would see itachi and kisami from here Naruto would react by literally instinctively throwing a palm attack right at Itachi's stomach. However, Kisame would grab Naruto's arm as he would then begin squeezing it and Naruto would say, yeah, as at this point, he would simply say, get off of me. As from here, he would say, Gale Bomb and shoot a burst of air straight from his palm. As at this point, Naruto would create some distance and then say, I gotta get Jiraiya. From here, Naruto would turn at the wall and say, Wind style, wind devastation jutsu, as out of nowhere a gigantic ball of wind would come in as it would completely obliterate the entire wall. From here, Naruto would jump out of the out of the room and onto the roof. As at this point, Itachi and Kisame would both pretty much instantaneously body flicker beside both um uh, Naruto, be meaning Itachi's in front of him and Kisame is behind him. Kisame would proceed to grip at his sword as he would say, <laughs> looks like this is the end of the line for you nine tails. And at this point, Naruto would say, I beg to differ. As at this point, Naruto would grab a kunai in his pocket as he would then proceed to throw it as far as he possibly can away from their area. As Itachi and Kisame would say, 
Looks like you're, that's that futile attempt of an escape isn't going to work. That diversion won't do you any good. And from here, this is when Itachi would say, there's no way. As at this point, Naruto's body would appear, catch the kunai, and drop to the ground as he would begin running away saying, there's no way I'd be able to handle both of those Akatsuki members. As he would then think, and I'm pretty sure that was Sasuke's brother. From here, we would have something completely different than what usually happens happen. Because this time, Sasuke would still end up arriving, however, when Sasuke arrives, Naruto quite literally just left the scene. Like, he literally just barely is running away. Kisame would basically go to run after Naruto, but when Itachi sees his younger brother Sasuke running in at him saying, ITACHI! YOU WILL NOW DIE! Running in with his Chidori in hand, Itachi would immediately basically dodge the Chidori as he would then grip his younger brothers by the throat. And seeing as there's no wall for Itachi to hold them up, he would quite literally just hold Sasuke up by the throat saying, You don't have enough power, hate, or desire to kill me, younger brother. I should kill you now. And from here, he would use the Tsukiyomi on his younger brother Sasuke, as he would then cause Sasuke to fall into unconsciousness, as it is at that moment that Jiraiya would arrive just in time to basically try to save um sasuke he would create a toad mouth jutsu and as soon as itachi sees that he's like yeah i don't want to fight against somebody who i'm secretly technically working with so from this point on itachi would basically use his amaterasu and say that he's going to be going now and from here jiraiya would say no you don't but itachi would leave the scene in a pool of crows crows would go all out crazy and jiraiya would lose sight of itachi from here kisame would have barely just caught up to naruto and naruto would turn around as he would see kisame standing there from here he would say you're a little you're a little slippery twerp aren't you now come here nine tails we came to get you and we're not taking no for an answer from here Naruto would say, well, then I guess I'm going to have to beat it into you as he would proceed to literally look at Kisame and he would then basically close his eyes as he would say, remember your training, remember your training from here. He would say, don't let it slip up as from here, Naruto's eyes would start turning red as all of his features would then start slowly turning animalistic. His brown hair would get a red slight tint into it as at this point. He would have one full tail of the nine tails come out as naruto would say that this is no time for games and at this point you guys are probably like hey yo pause when did naruto learn how to do this well uh, let's just say he's been training with jiraiya with the nine tails and trying to train with the nine tails ever since he's been with hayashi because of the simple fact that naruto you know has the nine tails he should at least try to use them however the only reason that naruto hasn't used them this far is because every time that he has used that power he's always lashed out but recently with the training of jiraiya and the seal being you know sealed back up by orochimaru naruto thinks that it's about the perfect time that he busts it out and so he would do so successfully at this point naruto would then activate his byakugan which would have more of a like a, like a purple tint to it like a darker purple tint to it this time because of the influence of the nine-tailed fox and at this point naruto would rush at kisame as kisame would smile naruto would secretly throw a kunai into the air actually throwing a bunch of kunais into the air in multiple different directions at all different heights as he would rush at kisame kisame would slash his sword at naruto's direction smiling but from here Naruto would teleport behind Kisame, and Kisame would hold the sword there saying, Come on, kid. This low-level technique, this won't work on me. Naruto would be shocked. This has worked on literally everybody else. So from here, he would use his other flying Raijin markers to basically create distance between himself and Kisame. And from here, Naruto would look at Kisame as he would say, Fine then. Then if that won't work, this will. He would then basically say 64 palm jutsu trigram as he would then basically begin to rush in at um 864 64 palms as you know he would rush in at kisame and kisame would smile as he would lick his lips and think this is gonna be too easy from here 
Naruto would rush at Kisame, and before they can even clash, Itachi would appear on the scene in a, in a burst of crows, as Naruto would be stopped and Kisame would both stop, as Itachi would say, we need a retreat now. From here, Kisame would say, I was just having fun, and Itachi would say, we have to go now. As from here, he would begin running off, and Kisame would say, you got lucky this time, kid. From here, about two minutes would go by, Naruto would fall onto his back as he would think, never want to have that experience again. But he would look down at the ground and think, the next time we meet, Shark Man, things will be different. From here, Naruto would look at the ground and pretty much carve something into the floor saying, I vow to never lose again. As from here, he would basically see Jiraiya jumping from house to house, I mean from rooftop to rooftop, as he would land in front of him with Sasuke's body completely unconscious. From here, Naruto would be like, is that? As Jiraiya would say, yeah, it's Sasuke. And they would both discuss what they're going to be doing. That is, until my guy would show up and pretty much say what happened. They would brief my guy on the situation, he would take Sasuke's body and retreat back to the Hidden Leaf Village to make sure he gets the medical attention he needs. From here, what would end up going down is Naruto and Sasuke, no not Naruto and Sasuke, but Naruto and Jiraiya would continue their journey to find Sting Tsunade. By the way, now you guys know, Naruto now has full access to one of the nine tales, um, tales I guess you could say. And his body realistically could probably handle about two or three tails of the nine-tailed fox. But the only reason that he doesn't use that is because that's too much nine tails influence. And if he tried to do that, at this current point, he would probably lose himself to the influence of Kurama. So he doesn't attempt that quite yet. However, this is when Naruto would end up pretty much finding himself with in a bar with Jiraiya, when all of a sudden they end up seeing a woman with blonde hair, brown eyes, and a green like, uh, like, like robe on. From here, they would walk over to Tsunade, and Jiraiya would say, "How's the booze treating you?" As Tsunade would say, "Jiraiya, you know, she's she's a drunken mess essentially." That's pretty much all the words that she was able to muster because of the simple fact that uh, Tsunade is a pretty much a drunken mess at this current moment. And that's all she could pretty much muster. So, yeah, that's essentially what ends up going down in terms of that. And what would end up happening after this is Naruto would end up pretty much just watching as Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Tsunade's helper pretty much have a conversation. From here, Jiraiya would brief Tsunade on the Haruzen situation, how Lord Third lost his life. This would all pretty much go to canon, including the part where Naruto would get angered at the fact that Tsunade disrespects the Hokage, and Tsunade would pretty much end up telling Naruto that he has some nerve. From here, what would end up essentially going down is Tsunade would actually be caught off guard by the fact that um by the fact that this boy is pretty much like completely like wanting to challenge her. And as soon as the bout would begin, Naruto would say, I'm not going to take it easy on you since you're a little candidate to be the Hokage. I think somebody ought to put you in your place, you old bag. As from here, Tsunade would get angered and she would touch the ground with one finger, completely cracking it. Naruto would jump up into the air and say, that's nothing, as he would throw a bunch of kunais at, at Tsunade's direction and she would quite literally just say, <laughs> as she would catch one mid-air, like about to hit her face. While Tsunade catches it, she's like, are you serious now, kid? And Naruto would say, checkmate, as he would pretty much teleport right over to the kunai that Tsunade just caught. And in an instant, in a blur from what Tsunade could see, Naruto would appear in front of her with the flying Raijin and a Rasengan in hand, as he would shove the Rasengan right into Tsunade's stomach causing Tsunade to be spun over and over and over until she would literally hit the wall uh, across from them. From here, Tsunade would pass out completely, and this is when her little assistant would have to come in and pretty much help her out for the rest of the night, since she is going to be passed out. That means that I'm pretty sure Tsunade was reached out to by Orochimaru before Jiraiya and Naruto encountered her, so I am going to be saying that Tsunade still would unfortunately end up having to go seek out Orochimaru. 
From here, events would pretty much play out just like they do in canon up until the fight between Naruto and Kabuto, which this version I'm going to be saying goes a lot different than what it does in canon. This fight isn't going to be something which Naruto is really going to be rel relying, not relaying, but relying on the flying rising marker. It's instead going to be a purely taijutsu battle. Now, as soon as this battle would start, Naruto would in fact activate his Byakugan and Kabuto would hold out his pretty much his hands ready to inflict medical ninjutsu his prowess onto Naruto. And as soon as the battle would start, Naruto would land about 6 hits with his Byakugan gentle fist style. However, one thing Kabuto does know is is very good uh, um, medical ninjutsu skills. So he actually is able to use the scapula to hit Naruto in a very vital muscle point, which would actually slow Naruto's movements down. This would cause Naruto to pretty much get slowed down, but he would then end up using his finesse to dodge some of uh, what's it called Kabuto's shuriken, which he ends up throwing. He would use the rotation jutsu to dodge all of that, and from here, this would be a strictly taijutsu based bout. From here, they would both end up using their taijutsu abilities, but in the end, Naruto would end up overcoming Kabuto's abilities simply due to the fact that he is a Hyuga member. He was trained by Hiyashi, and he has literally been like birthed to be a taijutsu specialist. So regardless of the fact that Kabuto does land a couple of pretty like decisive blows on Naruto, that doesn't stop Naruto from taking this battle and winning and becoming the victor of the battle. That being said, what ends up pretty much occurring from here is Tsunade and Jiraiya would both end up fighting against uh, Rochimaru who would end up pretty much reverse substituting himself out of there, realizing that he is definitely at a disadvantage. And so, from here, what we would end up having happen is Tsunade would end up returning back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto would actually ask Shiraiya what that was that Kabuto used, thinking that that was impressive. And Tsunade would say that he used his medical ninjutsu abilities to pretty much be able to hold a candle to Naruto's uh, Hyuga fighting style. Naruto would say that that's extremely impressive, thinking that if like the, his team had a healer on the side, then they would probably be pretty powerful. To which Tsunade would think that maybe this kid could potentially, that she would think, no, 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 that's, that's not right. And from here, they would all pretty much end up making it back to the village. Tsunade would end up becoming the Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village, and Jiraiya would end up giving Naruto the proposal to leave the village for three years. But one thing, is Naruto would actually end up saying, is there any way I can actually train with Tsunade? As Tsunade and Jiraiya would both be shocked. They're like, yo, what? Tsunade? What do you mean Tsunade? But Naruto would say, yeah, I, I want to learn medical ninjutsu. I want to learn how to heal people. And Tsunade would pretty much be the one who ends up teaching Naruto for the three years. Seeing as Jiraiya is not going to be wasting Naruto's time this time, I think it's very, very, very plausible that with the fact that Naruto has his insane chakra pool thanks to his Uzumaki bloodline, his insane prodigy and like pretty much gifted skills that comes from being a Hyuga and the son of Minato Namikaze, I do believe that Naruto would end up becoming just as skilled, if not more skilled, then Sakura became in the original canon. And due to the fact that Naruto has an overwhelming amount of chakra, way more than Sakura, I also believe that Naruto's Byakuyo seal would be way more useful in battle. Because Sakura only had so much chakra that she could store up into that small point on her forehead, but Naruto, Naruto on the other hand, is a completely different beast. Now, this Naruto always wears a headband, so no one's ever really noticed that Byakuyu seal that he actually does have. So, with that said, the three years would blow by in a heartbeat. Now, you guys might be wondering, but what about Sasuke? Come on, what about Sasuke? Sasuke in this version of events is actually going to be ending up, end up being taken by the Sound 4. Except in this version, it's actually going to go a lot different than what many of you guys are probably expecting. A lot of you are probably expecting for me to be like, okay, so Team 7 goes after them, Naruto freaks out, he promises Sakura, or no, not Sakura, but because Sakura isn't on Team 7, he doesn't actually end up doing that. Instead, when Sasuke ends up leaving during the nighttime, nobody is there. 
Sakura isn't on team seven. She's not close to Sasuke. So Sakura isn't going to be there to pretty much tell everybody, hey, Sasuke left the village and to go train with Orochimaru. So it would actually end up taking everybody way longer to find out what happened to Sasuke. And by the time that they would realize it, Sasuke would already very well be with Orochimaru. From here, Sasuke's training would have begun and the three year time skip would have pretty much came to a conclusion. From here, with the three years worth of training, Naruto not only pretty much focused his all his time in a, and um, his efforts into becoming a medical ninja. No, Naruto is not dumb in this version. Naruto also used that time to pretty much train his abilities with the Nine Tails, with the help of Jiraiya, who every now and then who would end up pretty much coming back to the village, would help Naruto out with his endeavors. And with all that being said, Naruto would then be able to master a grand total of four of the nine tails tails in if if he wants to use them he can go up to five but at that point his judgment gets very very hazy and naruto tends to not make the greatest decisions of all time so in this version there will literally not be no moment where naruto returns to the village and he has to do the little bell test with kakashi and hinata by the way, one more thing that I completely forgot to mention is in this version, Hinata and Naruto's relationship would flourish way sooner than it does in canon, with Naruto finding out that Hinata loves him a lot sooner than in the original story, meaning that Naruto and Hinata during this time would end up having a love life together. They would end up going on a lot of dates and Naruto and Hinata would end up becoming pretty powerful together as a whole. Hinata gets a lot stronger than her usual canon self in this version because of the simple fact that she actually ended up learning, uh, doing a lot of training with Naruto, who was a complete powerhouse. So when you're training with somebody who's that powerful, it tends to rub off on you. Sorry guys, I moved my pop filter a little bit by accident, messing around. But um, yeah, you tend to get pretty strong when you train with somebody who has the Byakugan, the power of the Nine Tails, the power of Tsunade, the power of the Flying Raijin, the Rasengan, the Summoning Jutsu. By the way, guys, he never ended up going to Mount Miyaboku in this version, which is pretty much going to be replaced by the Byakuyo seal, but not really because I probably still will have him end up going to learn Sage Mode. Not sure when, but maybe will. I'm pretty sure he might need it because... Actually, I don't know. Loki might could could go without learning Sage Mode in this version, seeing as I gave him the Tsunade training. So who knows? Actually, let's say he ends up becoming a Slug Sage. So instead of having Toad Sage Mode, which is what he normally has, he ends up learning Slug Sage Mode. I think that's a pretty cool like um, switch for what's going to be happening. So yeah, that's pretty much how powerful Naruto is going to be. Really really broken to say the least that being said at this point this is when we will now have the situation with the first sokage from here everything would pretty much stay as it does in canon up until the point when team seven ends up arriving at the cave which datara and um what's it called sasori are at now at this point many of you guys are probably like zether why are you rushing through the story now i'm gonna say this there's a difference between rushing through the story and covering material that you guys already know. I'm never going to just sit there and cover something that you guys already know unless I make small little changes. But since nothing changes here, I'm not going to cover that. So, uh, Lady Chiho still attacks Kakashi. They still end up having to heal Konkuro. Naruto can't exactly run off without the team. He has to wait for the rest of Team 7. So that is that. And instead, the only real difference is Naruto is actually the one who heals Kankuro. But that's literally the smallest difference in the world, so I didn't really bother to cover that. So when they do arrive at the cave, Naruto's also the one who ends up slamming his fist into the boulder and destroying it completely. Keep in mind, Naruto also has the monstrous strength that Tsunade possesses, plus the normal strength that he himself possesses. Because if you guys don't know, Naruto was already a powerhouse in his own right. However, with the power of concentrating his chakra to his punches, he's even more of a monster. So just take Sakura's hits, multiply them by four. That's how powerful... Okay, maybe that's a little absurd. Multi times two, okay, times two. Uh, Yeah, that's how powerful Naruto is. And with that, what ends up pretty much occurring here is as soon as they enter the cave, Sasori would be like, they're here. From here, Datara would say, Art, 
he's an explosion and he would proceed to basically be like yeah bakugo's my brother what about it <laughs> no i'm just kidding that wouldn't happen but seriously though he would proceed to say all right sasori get ready and from here both of them would look at naruto's direction as they would then proceed to pretty much get into their own respective fighting styles getting ready to fight against team seven Kakashi, Hinata, and Naruto versus Deidara and Sasori. The first battle which I'm going to be covering is Naruto versus Sasori, and then it's going to be Hinata and Kakashi versus Deidara. As soon as the battle would start, Deidara would pretty much rush out of the area and use his um his clay explosive stuff like that to pretty much outrun Hinata and Kakashi, which Deidara still ends up getting away in this version of events because we still need him to have that fight against Sasuke, which was just completely awesome. However, when it comes to Sasori, what ends up happening here is Naruto is completely able to destroy him. With a small a little bit of a, a coaching that Lady Chiho does, he is definitely going to be able to handle somebody in the likes of Sasori. So when the battle starts, Naruto would at first start overwhelming Sasori with his incredible speed. And as soon as he's able to land the first punch, he's able to completely destroy Sasori's first puppet. The Kikoko, I don't know what the puppet's called, but the um, the Conqueror, no, 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 the, I don't know what it's called. The the shell puppet, okay, the, the one that looks like a turtle. And so, what would end up happening from here is, let's see, let me think. Um, fight between uh, Naruto, who is a Hyuga and has all those abilities that I just gave him, versus Sasori. Okay. Let the battle would continue, Sasori would start keeping his distance, he would whip out his 100 puppet jutsu, Chiho would be like, watch out for the jutsu, Naruto would create 100 clones, help him out with taking out Sasori and all of his, his, um, his jutsu, and then from there, Naruto would proceed to pretty much hit uh, Sasori right in his heart, essentially killing him, punching the puppet out of existence and then slamming a Rasengan into the heart because Lady Chiho ends up telling him, yo, he's not gonna die unless you hit that certain vital spot. And so that's how that battle plays out. While they're all basically on their way back to the village, what would end up be happening at this time is Shikamaru losing his, well, sensei. Asuma sensei would die and team whatever, uh, Cho, Shika Choji, Ino Shika Cho, team Ino Shika Cho or something like that, would end up pretty much, um, yeah, mourning the loss of their sensei. So when they would all pretty much arrive back at the village, what would end up pretty much happening at this point is Jirai would also be in the search for pain, meaning Jirai still dies in this version of events. And Naruto in this version doesn't end up having to go through this crazy training of learning the Rasen Shuriken. Actually, let's say he does. Let's say he does end up going on that training montage. However, it takes way less time because this time Naruto actually knows how to wield chakra natures and stuff like that. So it ends up taking him half the time by using the method of the Shadow Clone Jutsu, which he ended up pretty much finding out during his three years of training with Tsunade. Tsunade was actually the one who ended up helping Naruto uncover the secret of the Shadow Clone, and from here, Naruto learns the Rasen Shuriken. So, this is when things would slightly begin to change in the story, seeing as everything in the timeline would start slowly pretty much going as it normally does. However, the reason that I'm kind of just slipping through little, little, little itty bits and details is because of the fact that this Naruto is already stronger than Itachi. If we're being honest with ourselves, he could probably slap Itachi, Pain, the only person who would possibly give him a slight bit of difficulty would literally just be Obito and Madara at this point. So yeah, Naruto would end up helping with taking out Kakazu with the Rasen Shuriken, just like he does in canon. And from here, he would learn about Jiraiya's death about one week later. This would completely destroy Naruto. A little less than it does in the original because most of his training was done with Tsunade, so instead of Jiraiya being his main teacher, Jiraiya is kind of his teacher and mostly his godfather. And Tsunade is going to be the one who fulfills that like uh, motherly figure for Naruto. Jesus Christ, Naruto has a motherly figure. 
that's insane <laughs> anyways with that said what ends up pretty much happening from here is naruto doesn't end up going to mount miyaboku to learn sage mode since he already learned slug sage mode and he simply waits for pain to enter the village now when pain does pretty much uh get close to the village naruto using his sensory abilities would end up seeing pain in the sky and when pain is pretty much readying himself to say shinra tensei naruto would throw kunai at his direction which pain would not react to and just move his head from here naruto would appear grab the kunai and in obito like fashion smash a rasengan into the diva path as pain would get sent crashing all the way into the ground by naruto and when he would hit the ground he would lift his head up as he just looks at naruto and he would slam ross and shuriken right into the the pre, uh the diva path's body from here a bunch of other people would start fighting against the other paths of pain and naruto would then be named the hero of the village as he would then go around destroying the rest of the paths of pain None of them are really going to be giving him any trouble since the diva path was really the main powerhouse of the bunch and the rest were kind of just there for support. So I'm going to be saying that that is how the pain arc would end. From here, what would end up happening is the remaining members of the Akatsuki, with the exception of Itachi, would end up pretty much having to all get together and attack the Hidden Leaf Village. Because of the fact that Itachi is going to be fighting his younger brother Sasuke and the rest of the Akatsuki members would end up arriving at the Hidden Leaf Village. From here, I would honestly say that um, the rest of the Akatsuki members that are left, meaning um, Kisame, Obito, that's, that, that's it. Whoa. So Kisame and Obito pull up to the village. And my guy is there who has the eighth gate and was able to defeat Kisame with the seventh gate. Wow. The finale is going to be heavily underwhelming because it's literally just Obito versus everybody at this point. So Obito would arrive with the intention of taking Naruto out. However, that's not going to go very good for him. As soon as Naruto sees the leader of the Akatsuki, Naruto would be thinking about his sensei Jiraiya, who had recently passed away, and anger would overcome him. He would end up unleashing five of the Nine Tails' tails, activating Sage Mode, activating the Byaku Yasil, activating his Byaku Gan, then taking out a bunch of kunai having one in his mouth as he would throw them all around at the direction of obito and from here naruto would begin to pretty much appear a bunch of places at once because he would create shadow clones which would all appear next to obito and all of them at the same time simultaneously would create ross and shurikens as they would all throw them at the direction of obito obito would react and escape the first couple of Rasengans, but eventually one of the Rasen Shurikens would end up hitting Obito and it would cause massive damage. From there, Obito would be heavily wounded and Naruto using his monstrous strength would punch Obito in half. Yep, you guys heard that right. He would punch Obito in half. From here, Naruto would land on the ground and this is when Hinata would come running over towards Naruto saying, Naruto-kun! Naruto would look at Hinata and be like, yeah, what's up? She would say, I need to tell you something, Naruto. As Naruto would look at her and say, what's up, Hinata? Hinata would look at Naruto and she would then say these fateful words. Naruto, I'm pregnant. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is where what if Naruto was a Hyuga is going to be ending, guys. If you guys enjoyed this part of what if uh you know this movie then please make sure to go down below smash that like button share this video with a friend share that video with another friend and then show it to your little brother and sister because why not okay why not anyways though guys with all that stuff pretty much out of the way let me know what your guys' thoughts was about this series any little things that i might have gone wrong any parts where you guys think i could have done better so i can improve for my later what ifs and then i will continue to grow as a content creator as a whole 
that being said though guys it has been your boy zether i love each and every single one of you guys but i am signing out peace